Hey guys, um, I am back after a very long time away. Um, I do apologize for not posting for so long, uh, but the first thing I do want to say is thank you so much for the response that I had towards my first video. I really did not expect that many people to be interested in it or find it useful, um, but I had people from all over the world leaving comments, so I really appreciate it. It really does mean a lot. Um, that's part of the reason, too, that I haven't posted in so long is I guess I didn't really have much to post because I didn't think, you know, that many people would be interested in this, but um, I do have something new for you today. Uh, just a project, a couple projects that I've been working on for a while now um, that I have found interesting. I'm pretty big into crochet mandalas now. Um, it's kind of an interesting, more modern take on crochet doilies, which have been around forever. Um, but this is a little bit of a newer twist on it. So I'll show you a couple of things that I've been doing with that. And then I'm going to go ahead and show you how to go about finishing off a crochet mandala project. I'm going to talk a little bit about the materials that I use and how I go about doing it pretty much start to finish. Um, so a couple of my favorites that I've been working on, and you can use all different patterns. Um, here's one that I've displayed in a hoop. Most of them I do display in hoops, so I'll show you how to do that today. Um, and you can do these pretty much any color. So a lot of them I do white, like this one. Um, I do some of them in like a nice beige as well. And as you can see, there's all different, you know, styles that I have. Um, there's two. Here's another one that I was working on. And then instead of just the plain, you know, white and beige, you can go off the board too. You can do colorful ones. Here's like a little sunburst that I did that's the same pattern as one of my white ones. Just a little bit of splash of color. Um, and then my personal favorite that I have is the big guy one of these and these are fantastic for hanging around pretty much anywhere but I personally like to put them in windows they really catch the light um, sometimes they'll leave a cool shadow on your wall too um, so pretty much endless possibilities with these I personally like to display them in hoops just because it stretches them out and gives them a nice clean finish um, but you can just you know you can stretch them out you can block it you can use it as a coaster there's so many options for what you know you could do with this and the patterns like I said are pretty much endless um, so like I said, I'm going to kind of go over the start to finish process. I won't show you me crocheting an entire one because that takes a while and I'm sure nobody wants to sit around and watch that. Um, but first of all, your patterns. Um, so a lot of these I kind of made up as I went along. If that's not really your style, that's fine. You can go online. You can search um, crochet doily patterns. I personally found Pinterest to be a huge help. Some of these patterns did come straight from Pinterest and they were just parts of doilies. So you can take bits and pieces, you can take just the center, you don't have to make the whole thing. Um, you can kind of just wing it, which is what I like to do, and I'll make them all unique, all different. Um, so first things first, you'll want to find a pattern or an idea, even like sketch up a design that you think, you know, you would like to see um, in your doily, and that's kind of going to be where you start. Um, in terms of materials, you can use pretty much whatever you want. My personal favorite is pearl cotton. Um, so these smaller ones here, these white and beige ones, I've used pearl cotton for those. I usually use number 12. Um, and with it, I'll either use a one millimeter or a 0.9 millimeter hook, whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you'd prefer. If you're not so big into the really tiny stuff and you wanna go a little bit bigger, um, these colorful ones, here's another colorful one I have. These um, are made out of regular embroidery floss. So you can do regular embroidery floss, and I think I used a two millimeter hook for this, um, which is a little bit easier on the eyes. Uh, so that's an option too. You can go bigger, you can even go with yarn if you want, something a little on the larger side. Um, but really just play around to see what works for you, see what you like. Um, the other thing that you'll need uh, once you're done crocheting, if you do choose to display it in a hoop, you're gonna need one of these metal rings. And you can find all these supplies pretty much at any craft store. Um, I've gotten these from Michaels, Joann's, um, AC Moore, Hobby Lobby, pretty much any craft store you can think of, they're gonna have all of these supplies that you'll need for this. Um, in terms of hoop sizing, you're gonna want a hoop that's a little bit bigger than your finished product. So I would suggest, uh, first things first, you finish your doily and then you go um, take it to the store with you to find a good size. So for example, this one here, I've got a hoop that's just a little bit bigger than it. Your doily does have a little bit of stretch and a little bit of give. So that's what's gonna work best for you. We are gonna to wanna to start with your mandala completely finished. As you can see, mine is all uh, finished off. There's no loose ends, everything's woven in. Um, you want your mandala in this condition and then you're ready to go. I also have my uh, hoop here that's a little bit bigger than the mandala, as I mentioned before. It does have a little bit of a give to it, so once we stretch that guy out, it's really going to make the shape nice and uh, tight and uniform. 
Um, I also have uh, here the same color, the beige pearl cotton that I used to do the mandala. You can do a different color for the outside if you'd like. I'm just kind of making mine more neutral, um, just because I'm gonna post these on Etsy later. Um, I have my scissors, uh, needle, my crochet hook. I also have paper and a pen and a ruler for some quick math that we're going to do. Nothing too hard. I'll put it all um, a description of that in the comments as well and I'll walk you through it step by step. So for now I'm going to set aside um, what I don't need. So we'll get rid of the needles and the scissors and this we'll come back to in a minute. Um, we do have to start with some calculations. So first things first, you're going to want to figure out how many points of your mandala are actually going to be connected to the hoop. Um, so for me, that's going to be each of these little triangular points here. I'm going to go around. I actually am not sure how many. So I have 16 points on mine. Um, like I said, I'm gonna connect it at each of these little tips of the triangles there. So I have 16 points around my mandala. I'm gonna jot that down real quick. And this is gonna help us figure out um, spacing, how far in between each point we want um, on there to connect to the hoop. It's just gonna make it a little bit more even. You can do this by trial and error. It's a lot faster and easier, I think, just to do the quick math. Um, most of it I just plug into the computer and it does the work for me. So next thing you're gonna wanna do is figure out the diameter of your ring. Mine, you'll just measure pretty much straight across. So you wanna know the distance between one side to the other, basically. Mine here is about seven and a half centimeters. I've already jotted that down. Um, it will tell you usually on the tag when you buy the hoop exactly what the diameter of it is, but you always kind of want to double check because sometimes it can just be off a little bit. So mine is seven and a half centimeters. I've already got that jotted down. Um, you're also going to have to figure out the circumference, and I'm not really a math person, so I just went online, searched diameter to circumference calculator, plugged in the numbers, and it spit out the answer for me. Um, I'll post a link to the converter that I used down there. But it came out to... 23.5619 and a bunch of other numbers. We're just gonna round it down um, pretty close to 23.5. So we're gonna put that down. And what that means is that the distance around uh, the outside of the hoop is gonna be 23.5 centimeters. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that number, and divide it by 16 because that's the number of points that we have connected here. Let me plug that in real quick. And my answer is 1.46, which is pretty close to 1.5. I'm just going to round it. It makes my life a lot easier. So what that means, now that we've got that settled, um, 1.5 is the distance we're going to want in between every point. So I'm going to connect a point to the hoop and then uh, have 1.5 centimeters of crochet, connect the next point to the hoop, and so on. Um, and you really only have to do this for the first one or two to check your spacing, and then you'll kind of know exactly how many stitches are in between. And I'll go over all of that, of course, as we go along. So 1.5 centimeters, that's going to be the magic number. And we'll set that aside, just keep that number there in mind. And then we'll bring over our pearl cotton and get started. So I like to attach the actual mandala pretty early on when I'm starting the hoop. But for the first part, we just wanna get the string on there. Um, so what I'm just gonna do is start with just a single crochet. I'm gonna slip stitch it to get it on. It can be kinda of hard because it is really tiny. But once you get a few stitches on there, you'll be set. So I've got two. I'll hold this string to the side there and crochet right on over it. That's less work for me to weave in later. Let's see. There's three. Four. Now once I've kind of got a base to start on, 
it's going to be a little bit easier to actually hang on to that in the future. There we go. So you can see there, I kind of already have it started. I have it going. I've got a couple of, if it wants to focus there, I've got a couple of little stitches already going. And now I only need those four, then I'm going to attach um, the actual mandala to my hoop here. So I'm going to take it, place it right on inside there, and choose any starting point you want. It doesn't really matter where. I'm going to go for this guy right here. You're going to insert your hook into the center stitch there of the point, like that. And then once that's inserted through, I'm just going to do a single crochet around that stitch. So I'll wrap that around, pull it through my mandala, and then finish that off like so. And then you can see my first point is attached there. Now here's where your number comes in. Um, so my number is 1.5 centimeters. I'm going to want 1.5 centimeters of um, crochet until I hit the next point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count while I work, just so then once I get an actual number of how many stitches that is, I don't have to measure after that. I can just go based off the number of stitches. So, let's... Now I've got a whole bunch of stitches here. I'm just going to measure. My magic number was 1.5 centimeters. So I'm going to grab my ruler, see how much I've got there. Actually, that looks like it's going to be just about perfect. You can see I'm measuring from the point that I connected to the end of my uh, crocheting there. So you want to measure that, and then let me go back and count exactly how many stitches I had there, just so then I'll know. Um, for the future. It looks like that was actually exactly 20 stitches. If it's something like 19 or like 23, just round it up to the closest multiple of 5, just because that's going to make it a lot easier for you to remember um, as you go along. So now that I've got that nice uh, one and a half centimeters there, I'm going to go ahead and connect my next point. So same as I did the last time, I'm just going to insert my hook into the center of my next one. I'm just going to be that guy right there. Insert the hook, pull the yarn through from behind. Sometimes you'll want to pull this string tight, um, especially as you get farther along in your points and more is connected. It's going to take a little bit more effort to be able to stretch the whole thing out. So you're going to want to make sure that that stitch is pretty tight there. And then from there, we're going to continue on working just around the hoop. Now, I found out from my last one that the distance I need between it is 20 stitches, so I don't really need to measure anymore. Sometimes I'll stop about halfway through and measure it again just to see if I think I'm on the right track. Um, you don't want to get the whole thing done and then realize, you know, you probably should have added a couple more or taken out a couple. But usually, um, the stitches you can squeeze together, you can pull apart a little bit. It gives you a little bit of wiggle room, so you don't have to worry too much. So now that I've got that sorted out, I'm going to do another 20 stitches. Um, and then I'm going to connect my next point.
Now I'm pretty notorious for forgetting to count while I'm working on these. Um, I do have a tendency to listen to music um, or watch TV, watch a movie, something in the background while I'm doing it. So I went a little bit far on this one, but let me run back and count and see exactly how many stitches I've got here. So I went a couple over. And I'm gonna take those out. There we go. And there I'm at 20. Can sometimes be hard to work with loops this small, but it leaves a nice finished look. And then I'm gonna do the same thing I've been doing. I'm gonna go to the middle of that little peak there. Insert my hook through from the front, pull the yarn or pull the cotton through from the back, and then tighten it up and finish that off. There we go. So we've got three on there as of now. I'm just gonna go around the circle um, doing the exact same thing. 20 stitches and then connect the next point all the way around till I get to the other side. Um, so I'm gonna head off and do that and then I'll be back to show you guys how to finish it up. So here we are, we're just about finished. Um, I've continued on working my way all the way around to connect all of the points. Um, 20 single crochet in between each one as we figured out at the beginning there. Um, and it makes it pretty even if there's any kind of areas that um, seem like they're spaced a little too far apart or a little too close together. You can always kind of tweak them, rearrange a little bit. They'll pull apart or they'll push together um, pretty much as, you much as much as you need them to. Um, so now we're here, we've only got a little bit left um, to kind of reach around to the end and connect it again. What I'm going to do first, just to get this string out of my way, is the back string here where you first started, you can just snip that right off. As long as you've done um, a couple of crochets around that end, you can snip it. You don't really have to worry about it coming unraveled or anything like that. Um, so now the only end we've got left is the one that we're working with here. And we're just gonna finish up. So when I first started, I did uh, three or four initial single crochets before I connected the first point. So following suit to get the 20 single crochets in each one, I'm gonna do about like 16, 17 from this side to connect it again to the front. I've done most of them already, so I'm just gonna put the last couple in. These can be a little hard because you've gotta squeeze it in between. Feel free to spread them apart a bit. I'm going to put one more in there. And then, like I said, I'm just kind of pull them a little closer. They'll stretch out, and then you've got connected all the way around to the other end. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slip stitch it to one of the first ones here. It can be hard to get in because these are pretty tight. If you're having trouble squeezing it in, um, feel free to grab a needle and just stick it in there to kind of wiggle it out a little bit so you have a little more space. So I'm going to insert my hook. I'm just going to slip stitch it to that one there. And then I'm actually going to do one more slip stitch um, to make it connect right at the very top of that point. So we're maybe one or two stitches off right now. I'm just going to insert it right above the point there. If I can get it in, like I said, these are pretty tight. Ooh. I'm just going to grab a needle. And I'm going to insert it so that I can give myself a little bit of wiggle room there. I'm going to wiggle it around, open it up. This is the toughest part about working with really tiny materials. There we go. That should do it. And I'll pull it through. Hopefully now I can get my hook in. Let's try that one more time. So I've got that hole that I kind of opened up a little bit. And there we go, my hook goes straight in there now. 
I'm gonna do one more slip stitch. And this is really because the way I want it to hang, I kind of want it to hang so that it's, um, the point goes straight up and down. So now that I've got a slip stitch, I've connected it again to the top. What I'm gonna do for the hanging string, I mean, I guess you could either finish it off here if you just wanted um, to attach some other type of string. What I like to do is just do a whole bunch of chains. So I'll start there and I'll literally just chain as long as I want the rope to be. You can make them tight, you can make them loose, do whatever you want. Like I said, if you'd rather attach some other type of cord, you can fasten it off, fasten it off there and be done with it. Um, but I'm just gonna make a bunch of chains All right, now I've reached a point where I'm pretty much good. That's about as long as I want it. Um, it is a little longer, but it leaves some room to tie around, whether you want to tie it around um, part of the windowsill or whatever you want to do with it. Gives you some space there. Um, you can make it longer or shorter. It just depends on what you feel like doing with it. Um, so from there, I'm just going to cut the end. Give myself a little bit of space to tie a knot there. I'm going to pull that last chain. I'm going to pull the string right through tug it a bit to tighten it up and then I'm just gonna tie a single knot in there you don't really need much it's not gonna come unraveled or anything like that but I'm just gonna put a little regular overhand knot right in at the end tighten it up and then I'll snip the end right there is the end of where I put my knot I'll just give it a little bit of space afterwards and there you are. It's all set. And that is probably the cleanest way that I've found so far to finish up a crochet mandala. Um, I hope this helped you guys out. I hope you guys get some inspiration from it um, and kind of create your own. Do what you want with it. Play around a little bit. I'll leave some resources, um, just things that might help you out in the comments below. Um, thanks for watching.